that virus of the false spirit of Vatican II simply corrupted the church. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Last Friday, Obama's cronies in the U.S. Department of Education and the Justice Department announced that every public school district in the country was now going to be required to allow either sex to use whatever bathroom they want to based on how they self-identify. While the wording of the announcement did not expressly state that federal funds from school districts will be withheld if they don't comply, it didn't need to expressly say that because it clearly implied it. Chicago-style blackmail tactics are nothing new to the world of the evil Obama administration. But there is a lesson here for Catholics, in particular Catholic bishops and priests. News of Obama's latest outrage was broadcast all over the airwaves, on newspaper headlines, in social media blasts, etc. And once again, the agenda of evil is setting the terms of the debate and public discussion. The headlines are dominated by the talking points that keep getting rolled out by the agents of hell, and they have their desired effect. Because of the constant pounding and drum beating on this issue, an issue that you recall almost no American had even thought of just about two years ago, now almost 40% of Americans now agree that anyone should be able to use any bathroom they choose because of the sex that they identify as. 40%. Two out of every five Americans, that according to the latest polling from Reuters. That's what happens when you set the terms of the debate, set the topic, set the agenda. Eventually, you win the discussion. It's the oldest sociological relational trick in the book, which is why it's such a mystery that church leaders run away from it like scared little children. Nobody wins when you're constantly on the defensive, when they are constantly reacting as opposed to being proactive. The surest way to lose the high ground, lose the discussion, lose the debate, is to let the enemy define it. The U.S. bishops have allowed the culture, run by the agents of hell, to seize control of every national discussion that there is. They need to push reset on all this diabolical madness. They need to stand up and grab back control, grab back the discussion, and start talking about evil, hell, the devil, sin. They need to announce their new plan to reverse what their weak predecessors allowed to happen in the area of contraception. For the love of God, literally, you need to start fighting for the sheep, fighting for the truth. Stop rolling over and playing dead. You need to announce the sickness and perversity of this transgender garbage in no uncertain terms. You need to decry the damage that has been caused by so many of you not standing up and opposing the evil of accepting homosexuality, even within your own ranks. You have got to abandon this spiritually insane notion of trying to get along with and be friendly with people who want to kill you. You need to set the terms of the discussion because you owe it to Almighty God. You need to stop being such a bunch of fraidy cats and utilize the mass communication media the way the enemy does. The enemy is always pushing the agenda of hell right out there. No apologies, no backing down ever. For God's sake, you need to realize that you are the representatives of God on earth, consecrated to the most sacred position on earth, a successor of the apostles of Jesus Christ. For the love of God, stand up and cry out and condemn the evil of contraception which has caused all this. Decry the idea that we are born for pleasure and comfort. We are not born for pleasure and comfort. As Pope Benedict said, we are born for greatness. No greatness comes without enormous sacrifice. But sacrifice for truth and right merits a person eternal bliss within the Holy Trinity. No cross, no glory. This is why so many Catholics are so suspicious of so many members of the hierarchy, because they will not announce the truth in all its total and complete terrifying glory. If a bishop came out and took a stand for the truth loudly, boldly, unceasingly, unsparingly, just absolutely decried the culture, he would be inundated with support and love and help of every kind for millions of faithful Catholics, and church militant would be near the front of the line. This idiotic pigeonholing of us, as a little sidebar note here at Church Milton, as being opposed to the hierarchy, is a lot of baloney spread by enemies who want to distort what we say for their own gain. 
We aren't opposed to the hierarchy. That's preposterous. We want the hierarchy to stop being opposed to itself. Stand up and be the leaders of Christ's sheep like you were consecrated to be. Too many of you are not doing that, and that is proven by the condition of the culture. That's not us attacking the bishop saying that. That's us saying you are not respecting the office of bishop, your own office, established by the Son of God to lead souls to heaven. You need to reverse course and start challenging evil to its face. For the love of God, get in the game and start attacking hell. Launch some of your own attacks against the devil. Satan hates the truth. Take the war to that loser demon, that accuser, that evil, heinous monster of a creature. Stop being so afraid of him. Stop being so terrified of his machinations against you. That disgusting, revolting creature needs to be crushed under your apostolic feet. Our blessed Lord himself declared to the first apostles, I have given you power to tread on scorpions. Start using that power in the here and now. Feel the power of your office flow through you. Feel the Holy Spirit who came down upon your original predecessors in tongues of fire, a fire that our Lord said he himself had come to set and that he longed to see burning. Be taken over by the Spirit that proceeds from the Father and Son. Become possessed by him. Ask him to command you to do his holy will. All this evil would begin to vanish if you did your jobs. It would be one hell of a fight, but when the fog of this spiritual war begins to evaporate, it will be Christ who wins the day, and he will win it through you. Hell cannot forever resist the powers of the Catholic Church. Have faith in Jesus. Have faith in the Queen of Heaven. The serpent cannot defeat them. Stop acting as though you don't believe this. If you don't believe it, then resign. If you do believe it, then step up. Through you, and this message to bishops includes every priest and seminarian, it is Christ who commands the enemy to depart. It is Christ who has given you the power to defeat him. It is Christ who has given his most blessed mother the power to crush his filthy head under her blessed heel. Stop letting him poison minds and hearts and souls. Stand up in the marketplace and announce, cry out the truth, for the love of God resist him. As the first pope tells us, resist the devil and he will flee. Announce the glorious truths of Catholicism as you were ordained and consecrated to do. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. The poor sheep, they are, they are really lost without shepherds.